Hello and welcome to this lecture on skin cancer. The most common cancer found in humans is basal cell carcinoma. So, that, so you know, extremely common. Uh, the good part about a basal cell carcinoma is that it's slow growing. At least 75% uh, of these tumors are found on the face and that's because our face is exposed to ultraviolet radiation quite a bit. And that's a common thing you see through all these skin cancers is ultra, ultraviolet radiation from the sun or using tanning beds, which is really concentrated ultraviolet radiation. is something we got to be careful with to uh, avoid getting these skin cancers. These are relatively benign. That's good. That's opposite of, you know, here in like metastasis where things can spread. Uh, but you still want to catch these early because if you don't, it can disfigure um, the area if it gets too deep. And it can spread. It has the potential to spread, but it, it's just rare. And you can see that this doesn't just jump out at you, but you can see little capillaries going through a pearly white uh, or a pearl appearance. And uh, that's called telectasia. So um, angio means vessel. So telangiectasic vessels means that um, you can actually kind of see them in the appearance of the nodule. And so it has that pearly nodule, and a lot of times the edges will be kind of rolled or raised. And so this is a typical basal cell carcinoma. It can be kind of pinkish red. It can almost kind of be translucent, pretty close to the skin color but it's the most common skin cancer and I believe the most common cancer period in humans. And the sun's up there to remind you that that's the most common cause. Uh, yeah, with, with sunlight, um, you have to be really careful, especially they found in research that it's not necessarily chronic exposure to sunlight. It's real burst of intense sunlight. So say, someone like myself that doesn't get a whole lot of sun living in Arkansas. Uh, a few weeks ago, we went to Jamaica. And Jamaica is a lot closer to the equator than Arkansas is. And um, the way I look at it is I was going to go out there and get a little bit of sun, maybe just enough to t turn a tinge pink, which is not really what you're supposed to do, just to get a good dose of vitamin D. Because there's a balance here where you want to get a little bit of sun to help stimulate vitamin D synthesis, especially with this COVID thing going around. Vitamin D, it's, it acts like a steroid hormone, goes into the DNA and upregulates over 200 genes that help our immune system fight off infections, such as the COVID virus. So are the, um, it's nice to get a little bit of vitamin D, but the, the, the balancing act is you've got too much if you can see any redness. Um, and when I went to Jamaica, uh, the sun comes down pretty hard. The, the breeze off the ocean kind of made it feel like it wasn't as hot. And it wasn't 30 minutes. I was just kind of laying on my back and I was scorched and miserable for a few days. And it doesn't, you know, a couple of those and you're well on your way to cancer. Uh, you know, it's people need to wear sunscreen, especially when they do have chronic exposure, like someone that maybe works in Arkansas, you know, outdoors and construction or something. But it's though it's when you're pale and you have fair skin and you go out there and just uh, get a heavy dose of that Caribbean sun with that direct sunlight, you know, being closer to the equator, those really uh, can be a the cause of this and it may take 20 or 30 years for it to develop but it may be a few of those vacations like that that really do the trick so another one we talked about basal cell the second most common skin cancer is squamous cell carcinoma and squamous cell can give you this it's almost like the sore that never leaves it crusts over and it'll bleed off and on and there's kind of two different flavors here. The better prognosis is in situ, where it's confined, confined to the site of origin. It doesn't spread any. And then obviously invasive kind of gives you the idea that it's metastasizing and getting 
into other tissues, which is always dangerous. What they found is sunlight, UVB radiation from sunlight, can actually damage, mutate the DNA of a tumor suppressor gene. We talked about that in an earlier video. P53 is the uh, most talked about tumor suppressor gene. It acts at a checkpoint in the cell cycle, and when it sees some damaged DNA, aka from uh, radiation from the sun, it will cause cell suicide because we don't want to replicate a cell that has DNA damage because just, that could cause cancer. So uh, P53, when it sees that damaged DNA come, come through, it causes apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. And that's when you peel. And just a few days ago, I, I look like, I mean, I was just scaly and peeling everywhere. Um, not a few days, but about a week ago from that trip to Jamaica. But notice that these are in sun-exposed areas. It's common on the ear, sometimes on the top and rim of the ear, the lips, the top of the head, especially with bald individuals, the face. So these are areas that need sunscreen. They need protection from the sun. And here, melanoma is the one that kills the most people. So this is the one we really need to be careful about. And there's an A, B, C, D, E uh, to kind of mnemonic to kind of help you remember what to look for. So a normal mole, another name for a mole is a nevus. So some, that's something to keep in mind when uh, you, you read and see a nevus. And dysplastic nevus shows some precancerous uh, stuff going on in, a histo in, in histology, looking under a microscope. So down there at the b bottom, these are the bad ones. These are, these are the really bad guys, the melanoma. These uh, are where you have a mutation in a melanocyte. Those are in the stratum basale, that bottom layer of the epidermis where you have mitosis going on. But in between those basal cells, where you get the basal cell carcinoma from, you have melanocytes. And melanocytes produce a protein called melanin. And some people have more melanin than others. The ones that have more melanin, the darker skinned individuals, have less chance of getting skin cancer than someone who's light skinned. And that, that's where the dose varies from what's the optimal amount of sunlight for someone to get vitamin D versus not risk at cancer. And it varies from individual to individual because of their skin tones. So uh, A stands for asymmetrical. If you have a mole, you want the borders to be nice and symmetrical. You can see that that one's irregular and B kind of piggybacking off that. C is color. You want just one solid color throughout a uh, nevus or mole instead of having some blue or some red kind of mixed in with some black and brown. That's a bad sign. Uh, the, the eraser of a pencil, you want it to be smaller than that. The, uh, if it's larger than that, that's another red flag for melanoma. You can see for D for diameter. And then E for evolution, about 70% of melanomas come from a, a pre-existing nevus or mole. And so if you see a mole that you've noticed your whole life and all of a sudden it starts looking different, that's a red flag. You need to see a dermatologist and they might want to do a biopsy to see if it is melanoma. If you have melanoma, the earlier you get it, the better. I had a good friend from high school that lost his life because he had this on his shoulder, didn't get in quite soon enough. Um, this is just one of several different ways they stage it, but it gives you a good idea. It's all about the depth. You want um, to catch it early when it's superficial. So T stands for tumor in this, in this type of um, scoring system. IS is for in situ, which means it's you know right there at the origin. One means that it's under a millimeter. That's a good prognosis. You can see uh, T2 is getting down from the epidermis into the dermis, not quite to the blood vessels, but T3 and T4. I think T4 stands for four millimeters or more into the, the, the skin. Uh, you're getting down into... Uh, you can see some maybe venules and capillaries there and uh, lymphatics, small lymphatic vessels. These are going to take these cancer cells and, and spread them throughout the body. 
So you want to catch it early and get it cut out of there before it gets down to those uh, in the dermis where all the lymphatic and blood vessels are. Uh, I wanted to throw this in. I thought it was pretty interesting. Although Caucasians or light-skinned people are 20 times for every um, 20 times more prevalent to get skin cancer. That didn't come out just right. Uh, it can happen to African American individuals. You can see that it's talking about Jamaica. My favorite music is reggae with Bob Marley, and he lost his life at 36 to a form of melanoma. And uh, a lot of times, African American People will get, if they get melanoma, which is rare, they'll get it on the palms of their hands, the soles of their feet, where the, it's not near as pigmented, and or in the nail. And in his case, it happened in his nail. And he noticed it in 1977 when he was playing soccer, thought it was just kind of a discoloration of the nail, didn't really seek medical help until it was too late and it had spread down, got to those blood vessels and lymphatics and spread and metastasized and took his life at age 36.